Welcome to the Top Order Podcast. It's that time of season again. It is the 16th edition of the Men's IPL, the Indian Premier League. We're going to cover all the runners and riders in this 10-team tournament. So two expansion teams in from Series 15, WrestleMania 15. And we're going to talk WrestleMania 16 um, after the swish. Stay tuned. So, boys, IPL time again. Um, I think remiss of us not to um, cover off, I think, the Women's Premier League final uh, to open the show. Uh, Mumbai Indians showing that odd years are their friend in the women's uh, edition of the tournament as well, 2023. Um, Matt Sibberbrunt, player of the match in that final, where, let's be honest, um, I I think from a uh, a Delhi Capitals perspective, it looked all over at 79 for 9, managed to scramble their way to uh, a score, 139. Yeah, that's with a partnership. It, you sort of watch that and think, geez, where were these two throughout the, you know, like, one, one they betting higher in the whole tournament because they just smashed it. Mm. Yeah, it strange, strange, wasn't it? Like, they really got hold of Izzy Wong, didn't they? Who, yeah. if you look at her figures, looked pretty good. But then if you look at the way that she got her wickets, three full bongers. What are you talking about? Yeah, she figured out the way to bowl <laughs> yeah. on that wicket. It was, it was, just bowl. It was to take the wicket out of the equation. Yeah, exactly. don't, don't need to use the facility. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and then, look, I guess... Matt Silverbrunt uh, took a, a little while to get going, but in the end, paced you know paced her innings really, really well. Really good on the sweep and the reverse sweep. So he kind of used those uh, square boundaries to, to good effect. When she wasn't in it before, she was placing it into gaps for for twos. But Haley Matthews as well, uh, who I think leading wicket taker in the in the tournament, main player of the through the gate player of the through the, the gate wicket that she got was beautiful through the gate bowling in the cap a Jeffrey Boycott <laughs> back in the nineteen eighties, but. Um, guys, what, what do we take away from the tournament? I think, you know, uh, the cliche going around and, we, we, you know, we've got to agree with this. I think it's been fantastic, really, for, for women's cricket. The, the quality of the cricket on offer has been absolutely superb. Um, yeah. I, I, think, I think you can go a step further. I really do. Like, it, you know, I've, we've talked many times about how, you know, the, these T20 leagues, like, there's too many. There's no, there's no getting past the fact that there's too many of these leagues. You kind of get bored of them. Especially in New Zealand here, we're sitting here. Those games are on for us, IPL, WIPL, or WPL. They're on middle of the night. So it's actually hard to, you really have to be committed to watch them live or at least, you know, to find time to watch the highlights later on. But it's been great cricket. I don't think it needs, like, it's, you know, I mentioned it last week. Some of it feels a bit condescending when they'll keep going on about bringing boundaries in and all this kind of stuff. I think it's just been fantastic cricket. And I actually, you know, been really surprised because. When you get a first edition of a tournament, sometimes it can feel scratchy and like mm. the players can feel disjointed and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know, like you saw the joy of those players at the end of that game. Yeah, I, I think that that's actually the, the, the most pertinent point there. It was the first edition of the tournament. It was a great start for the women's IPL. It's only going to build from there. There's yeah. more money in the game now. Um, you know, you've got more professional players, and that, that's how you build the sport of uh, women's sport of cricket. Mm. Absolutely. Um, well, guys, let's move on because I think there's... Oh, a you bit... can't move on without mentioning that Amelia Kurt, New Zealand, okay, also, bring... won, also won that. Like, that. That's all I need to say about that. But, we, you know, any excuse to get a New Zealand mention in here. We... Yeah. And can we, can we get it any more localised? Can, you know, can we bring it back to, to Christchurch in any way, shape or form? Uh, bring no, team, no, no, I can't. Not really. I have... I have, uh, I have I bet uh, she's well, been to Christchurch. She's been there once. I believe so, so, yeah. I have, I have Robbie Kerr has actually refereed it. Her dad has refereed a game of touch that I've gone to. He's <laughs> there a, it there is. There you go. There it is. Like in an in a indoor cricket, uh, you know, holiday program uh, in Wellington. So there you go. There's some some small connection I can bring to uh, the local work for New Zealand. Six degrees of Cricket Cricket Club. <laughs> <laughs> Early yeah. doors in the Top Order podcast. There week. we go. And look, we're on YouTube again, guys. So um, if you do... Um, Double tap like and you can mute <laughs> Stu when he talks about Christchurch if you, if you wish. Guys, let's get into the 16th edition of the men's tournament. Uh, so, you know, we covered, I think, on a few podcasts ago some of the notable sort of auction pickups. Uh, just discussing, obviously, you no know, Trent Bolt, the Mumbai Indians, his you know, second season now, I think, at the Rajasthan Rules. What we're going to do in terms of a format, a uh, little bit like the Hall of Fame, Baldy, um, I don't think we're going to go too much into. And explain that other than to say tournament starts on April Fool's Day. Yeah, um, not a joke. April April the first. Uh, two groups of five teams um, that play um, each other home and away. So there's lots and lots of games through those uh, through those group stages. 
and then into the playoffs where we do have that eliminator so you get the two bites of the cherry rather than a straight semi-finals sitch um, but the tournament runs until the end of may yeah. um so look i think probably pertinently for northern hemisphere cricket that's not too far away from england versus ireland um, at Lords, so um, we'll see what happens there. We, you know, players potentially uh, needing to get on planes and things like that. But what and the World Test Championship final, which is absolutely yeah, yeah. cover a lot of people in this in this IPL tournament. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, who knows what's going to happen as as it goes later on deep into the tournament. Yeah, but I guess we've seen players carry white ball form, haven't we? Um, you absolutely. know, from from those tournaments into Test cricket. So yeah, both um, last yeah, year. I think that's going to be yeah, yeah, that's going to be something to look out for. But look, what we are going to do, we're going to talk a little bit about. Uh, what could go right for each team, what might go wrong for each team, um, and then the players that we are, to your point, Lippy, most likely to get out of bed for to, to go and watch that, that game of cricket, um, or at least to you know to, to try and find out. Uh, it's probably a five-hour window now to watch an, an IPL game, isn't it? Uh, either, either to watch the full replay or to watch the, the little 20-minute bite-sized um, highlights. Um, so who we're gonna who we're gonna pick up from that perspective, and then of course in true top order fashion, we will talk a little bit at the end about our predictions for our playoff makers. So our four teams that we think are going to make it through and the eventual winner of the tournament as well. So we've we've, we've come up with a, a pretty decent system here to talk through the teams. We're going to go in alphabetical order. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> no so, expect spent on that algorithm. No, absolutely. So. Um, even my rudimentary uh, alphabet tells me that we're going to start with uh, the Chennai Super Kings, aren't we? We are, we are. So, yeah, disappointing season for them last year. Finished finished ninth after winning it in, in 2021. So, you know, big swing of, of fortunes. I think in 2021 it was that COVID year and I think them storming home to win was a bit of a surprise at that point. But even then, I don't think anyone sort of thought that they would then fall to, to ninth. Weird kind of season. Jadeja took over and then, you know, kind of relinquished the captaincy partway through the season. Donny back still is now, still is the captain of uh, the, the CSK. It's sort of still that old guard. There's, uh, but, you know, Fleming, Stephen Fleming obviously in, ch- in charge. But Ben Stokes, the big massive money signing. And, and I mean, I question for the, for the group, I guess, before I get on to kind of why we, why they can win and all, all of those questions is what do we think Ben Stokes will actually, his role will be? Because big signing to, always looks injured, like, or, or, you know, but always seems to push through the pain barrier, bowls when needed. Mm. It feels like he's going to be an important, going to have to be an important player when I look through this lineup. But he's got a big summer ahead in England. What do you think his role's going to be? Well, look, I, I think it's really telling that, you know, Brendan McCullum almost straight after that Basin Reserve test match said he's going to go to the IPL. I've had a chat with, I think he had a round of golf with Stephen Fleming, didn't he, um, the, the yeah. day after that test match. And, you know, said amongst other things, we talked about how we're going to look after Ben Stokes. Uh, but I think obviously really wants him to go and play in that because I think McCullum believes from a cricketing perspective going and playing in that tournament is, is something that can bring form and confidence and, and all the things that he really wants from that England cricket side. The role that Ben Stokes will play will be an interesting one. Let's not forget, he doesn't actually bowl a hell of a lot in white ball cricket mm. for uh, for England, even through that T20 World Cup in Australia. He was used relatively sparingly. Um, I think, you know, when there is a, a moment in the game where he thinks he might be able to make an impact, except expect to maybe see him with the ball. Um, but I, I would I would imagine you know that, that he might bat somewhere near the top of the order. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, used very very successfully with Josh Butler, I think, um, at the top of the order in, in some T Twenty cricket. So you might see you might see him play that role. You'll certainly see him, I think, in the top four yeah. um, of, of that of that lineup. And maybe he's going to bowl when when he's really needed to bowl. Um, and you're not going to be able to keep him out of the game in the field either. He's going to want to field in in those positions where he can impact the game. Yeah, I had I had not put Stokes in capital letters when I um, when I looked at this team. I think he's just going to be a massive kind of catalyst to to, to win games for um, for CSK. If if you look at that squad and looked at them, and if they didn't have Brent Stokes in there, I feel like it would be a significantly weaker squad. Mm-hmm. Just seeing his name in there makes it much stronger for me. Yeah, well, and I think when your point about the bowling, I mean, you know, and the like, we we are no experts on the IPL, but you know, you, you sort of do your research to try and find out about the tournament and kind of get involved. And obviously then going back to the Chipak 
like it's going to be significant and it sounds like they're all of the the talk out of the campus that they're going to be looking to spin again to be a, a really significant part you know you've got the the likes of Jadeja who's in there you've got Maui Nali who are going to be they they sort of build their side around all these all-rounders mm. you know Sheik Thana's in the side there's Sentner I, I think probably there'll only be a spot for one of those guys and yep. I always hope, Mitch, I, I've been saying for years when we do these previews, I hope Santa goes somewhere else because it seems like his skill set with Judasia just crosses over. And but yeah, I feel like it's going to be the same again, you know. But there's, yeah, there's a lot of Kiwi connections there. But I think Spin is going to play a, a big role for them. Do you think they're going to be very dependent on that? Like I'm looking at their fast bowlers, there seems to be a little bit of a, maybe a less, a little less artillery there. Mm, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think Chahar is going to be. You know, obviously, pretty important for them as as their seamer, but I would I would expect that they just go all out and spin. You know, whether it's I mean, we we, we always again when we have these chats about Maui Nali is like how how is how much of a bowl you know is he going to part is he going to play with the ball and, or you know where is he going to fit into lineup? So I think that's there's a lot of fascinating questions I have about CSK of you know where they're going to put all these players like you say Stokes with a Conway who I think when I look at this lineup is just an absolute lock, you know, should be in the side every every game. But again, if you have Maui Nali, if you have you know someone like Dikshana, if you if you want to bring in you know the the baby Malinga, you know Patirana as well from Sri Lanka to kind of boost that seam attack that you don't really have, suddenly you're going okay. Well, you know maybe we have to sacrifice Conway if we want to boost our bowling, which mm. looks like one of the weaker areas. So. I, I don't know that it's all that weak though. I mean, if you have a look at if you're going to build your side around spin and your spin attack is Jadeja, Mo Ali, and Fukshana, mm. that's a really really good spin attack. Yeah, and now absolutely. you've got to get eight overs out of Shavim Dubey, Tusha Dispanda, Deepak Chahar, and a little bit of maybe Ben Stokes. So you've only got to get eight overs out of those other four guys. Mm. So there are plenty of Matchup specific options that Chennai have. I actually think that their batting is a little bit weaker. Um, if you have a look at their top four having to be Stokes, Conway, Rutraj, Gaikwad, and Mo Ali, with a little bit of Rayudu, maybe some Jadeja, and then MS Stoney at seven, that's not as strong a top seven as you've got in maybe some of the other sides in the competition, even though that you've got Ben Stokes in there who could win you a game at any moment. I think the key word there is matchup sport. You know, we talk about all those players. There's a, you know, there's a there's a chance that they go. Do we need a little bit of seam and someone who's going to bash it? And it's a very early day. Uh, do we need a little bit of spin? No, sorry, you know, the opposite. Sorry, mm. a bit of seam. It's a Ben Stokes. He smashes it. Might buy you a couple of overs. Mm. Um, who's going to kick with kick? You know, Devon Conway's a fantastic fielder as well as Gloveman. Donny's not going to play the whole tournament. You wouldn't have thought from a from a fitness perspective. So there's, I think there's it's, lot, it's another. There's, lot, there's yeah. lots of questions there around think, it, and, yeah. I, and I think when we look at the squads, I think you can kind of almost go: is this matchup or is this just option? Um, and I think we've got to give credit, I think, to a lot of the analysis that goes around now. That a lot of the, the thought that's put into these squads that are going to be successful is probably around how they play home and away. Um, and, and obviously, we're back to playing, you know, at your home grounds. It isn't that sort of uh, three or four yeah. venues mm. tournament this time round. Mm. Um, so, you know, they, they've built some of those squads, and we talked about it last year. They've built their squad to play at home, and then didn't get to do that for, yeah. for a couple of years. So, I, I think that's a factor as well. Just going back to your um, Donny comment there. So, take putting an injury aside. Do you, how many games do you think he would play out of fourteen? Ten. Ten. It's a good line. We'll review that at the end. Thanks yeah, you. yeah, that's, that's a good, that's, that's a good thing, Drew. I mean, you, the the way you guys have talked about it is is at the moment it's it's covered kind of all those you know where I think it goes right for them is if that spin if they get this balance of that spin right and those three bowlers you know if they do get the most out of Moin Ali if they do get the most out of Jadeja who's I think just been one of the big winners in their uh, Indian contract list that came out today or yesterday. See, I can see you bursting to jump in. No, no, I'm not bursting to jump in. I'm nodding. I'm agreeing with you. Oh, that's that makes a change. But that that spin part, like, yeah, that's where it goes right for them. But I think you've also touched on the fact that I think they're very reliant. Where it goes wrong is they're very reliant on these overseas players. Mm -hmm. And I think if they don't hit, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see that Indian core that aside from Jadeja. Yeah, a lot, a lot falls on Jadeja. Yeah, that yeah, and I think last year it showed that when when it all falls on him, you know, we didn't see the didn't best see. out of him. Mm -hmm. We didn't we didn't mm -hmm. see the best out of him. He was still batting lower down the order. Like I expected him last year to to you know maybe come up to four or like really take charge. 
but it never really happened and, and yeah. suddenly it felt like the weight was all on his shoulders and it, you just didn't get the best out of him at all. Yeah, they, they really need to get something out of Rutaraj Gaikwad and, and Batero Yudu in that middle order to give Jadeja a license to go big at the end and he could come off sometimes or sometimes not but he needs other players to step up around him and it can't all be down to he and Doni at the end. Well guys, we'll do predictions at the end. I am going to call enough, let's move on. We're 14 minutes in, we're one side um, into this uh, preview. Just a quick reminder, we have been nominated in the Sports Podcast Group uh, Awards for Best Cricket Podcast in the World. Um, we're going to take that, I think. And that's the name of the, that's the, name of the award, right? So yeah. if you do have a moment, please do go and log on. Uh, perhaps maybe pause the podcast now. Go and get yourself a six-pack of beer, order a pizza, because it's going to be a long one, I think, as we get to the end of this. But go to Sports podcastgroup.com and cast a vote for the top order podcast. And, and thanks for everyone who, who has voted, voted, absolutely. voted already because we've had a few people online contact us and say, yeah, voted for you. So, yeah, really appreciate that. Awesome. And, and look, I, I've heard other podcasts shouting out the same thing. So we just urge you, you know, even if you don't <laughs> like the podcast, get your friends and family, <laughs> dogs and cats, anyone you can uh, with an email address to go and, uh, go and vote for us. Let's move on. Um, so let's take a little bit of a time check here. We're 16 minutes into the podcast. We're in team number two, which is going to be the Delhi Capitals. So uh, we'll stick a generous uh, six or seven minutes on the clock. And oh, Baldy, I think that's you, isn't it? That's heaps, heaps of time to talk about the Delhi Capitals. Um, what have I got written down here? So the big, the big name I've got written down here with a big line through the middle of it is Rishabh Pant. Mm. Right? So if you have a look at this side from top to bottom, Rishabh Pant would normally slot in at four in that cricket side and make it a very, very powerful top four with Prithvi Shaw, Warner, probably someone like Mitchell Marsh, and then you've got the all-rounders, Pandey, Patel, Yash Dool, and, and then the bowlers. But without him, they've really only got, from what I can see, one backup wicketkeeper of any note, and that's Phil Salt. So he's, he's going to have to play most games, you would think, which then creates some balance issues for them. Because if you've got Warner, who's the captain, is probably going to play most games, if not every game. Mitchell Marsh is a pretty good player in pretty good form, so you would think that he'd be in the team somewhere. You add Phil Salt into the mix. That's three out of the four or, um, overseas players. And then you've got to fit in Enric Nokia, Rothman Powell, Riley Rousseau, Mustafa Zuraman, and Lungi Ngidi somewhere into that lineup. Look, there's plenty of depth in that Delhi Capital side, and that's where I've got down here where they can, you know, where they where it can all go right for them is they've got heaps of depth. Depth. So outside of their first eleven, I've got Powell, Riley Rousseau, the Fizz, Naga Koti, Safraz Khan, Lalit Yadav, and Lungi Nagidi, all outside their first my my first choice eleven. So they've got plenty of opportunity there. They're, they're also really really well coached. So their coaching setup is Ponting, Ajit Agarkar. Shane Watson, maybe, maybe not. He's a reviews coach, is it? Uh, he is. He he has been instructed not to send any review messages out at all. In fact, he's not even allowed in the post game reviews. Right. Um, <laughs> but he's all pre all pre game stuff. Um, and then James Frogger hopes the Queenslander um, is there is one of their bowling coaches. So look, they've got plenty of co coaching talent in there. Um, I just I just wonder how they're going to get the balance of their four overseas players, right? If they're going to have Warner, Marsh and Phil Salt in their top three, that only leaves one more spot. Yeah. We talked about it a little bit last year, the benefit of having, you know, and I think we made a comment, the benefit of having an Indian keeper yeah, because um, it helps you get those guys in. When you kind of reflect on that, though, I think there's a lot of explosive, um, you know, batters who bowl a bit, bowlers who, um, bowlers who bat a bit, if I've got that the right way around. Mm -hmm. Phil Salt, I think, is a chance to actually have a really good tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's actually... Looked pretty good in, mm -hmm. in some of his limited opportunities for, yep. for England. Um, he kept really well, I thought, in the 100 last year. So I, I actually, as much as I'm going to make a pretty bold statement here, I, I think it's a like-for-like -like replacement. I, I think you're going to get a similar output out of a guy like Phil Salt as you would out of Richard Oh, yeah. You're, 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 you're going to get at a, much, at a much higher price, though, yep. because it's obviously slight. So at, at what point do you reckon they subscribe to the theory that a wicketkeeper is just a backstop class? Like? I think they've already subscribed to that, haven't they? Do you think they'll pick someone else to wicket rather than Salt? I, I don't know. I think if they have, if they run into problems with their bowling, I mm -hmm. think that's if there's a likelihood that they might consider that, right? So they've got Mustafa Zuraman and Lungi and Gidi sitting mm -hmm. there potentially on the bench. If you if you look at how they've got to structure that side, I want at least one of those in the side with Onrik Nokia to go around Akshar and Kuldeep Yadav and Chetan Sakaria. 
that's that's the real struggle for me is how they're going to fit all of their bowling into their into their lineup. They've got plenty of they've got plenty of cattle there to use. It's just how they're going to get the best out of them. And in terms of playability, who are you going to you know pop pop down and watch on the old uh, on the old TV in the morning? Well, I've I've actually written down Mitchell Marsh because in the lead up to the last World Cup. Mitchell Marsh was the lone gun for Australia. He was playing every game. He was batting at three. He, in this team now, has got a huge mission because he now needs to be a leader in that batting lineup. It's not, you know, him and a bunch of other players. It's basically David Warner coming off um, a big elbow injury and age 35. Who knows what we're going to get out of him? Are we going to get the same Warner that top scored for the Delhi Capitals last year and yeah. average 45? Or are we going to get so twenty? So that's that's a real big question mark for me. Well, what about the, the the baby elephant in the room, Rishabh Pant? How do they get past that loss? Well, I, I I think they've got to get a lot out of Phil Salt, I, and I think they will. But it's it's like you said, um, Raj. It, he comes at a high price because he's an overseas player, right? And that really messes with their ability to chop and change that overseas lineup to get an extra bowler in there. So, yeah, that's going to be really, really tricky to see how they do that. Ricky, and, Ricky Ponting's been talking up Prithvi Shaw a lot mm-hmm. in, the, in this build-up to this yeah. tournament. He, I mean, I mean, and I kind of, you know, I think we've said it before again, like, when, when Ponting talks, you kind of listen. You know, he sort of, yeah. he's kind of got that, that aura about him. And he's been, you know, he's been, yeah, definitely, this is a big tournament for Prithvi. I've never seen him look better. I've never mm. seen him look better prepared. And, Scored you know, a ton of runs in the in the first class tournament last year as well. And I and I think this is a massive tournament for the Indian players. I know, you know, it always is, but this is like at the end of this tournament, it was obviously another, you know, another there's a home few World Cup. But there's a home ODI World Cup. It's a different format, but a home World Cup for them. Like if you're ever gonna be a draw card, mm-hmm. I feel like that's gotta be one of the biggest. And Prithvi Shaw has found himself out of the reckoning for India for a little while now, mm-hmm. after being someone who was you know the golden yeah. the golden child for a little he, while. He's going to have to have a hell of a tournament though, because if you have a look at the like the names across the top of the order, that some of the Indian names in there, there's some pretty big names. So he's going to have to bash the door down. He and um, Akshar are the two local players that I'm looking to really stand up for this Delhi team if they're going to go ahead and, and make the playoffs. Awesome. We're about on time. Um, let's just Thanks look much. at some betting odds as well as we go through. So we talked about CSK. They are 8 to 1. So uh, I am going with the English way of recording odds rather than like this ridiculous dollars thing. Um, and then Delhi caps uh, okay. 7 to 1. So it is pretty close when we look at the, when we look at the betting. There's a couple of teams at the bottom that we'll come, um, come on to. We'll move on to the next team, defending champions, the Gujarat Titans. They're betting with Bet365, other sporting betting websites are available um, is 11 to 2 uh, they are the favourites for the tournament um, so I picked you know these guys to have, have a chat through uh, we normally equitably divided this up two teams uh, each when it was an 18 tournament now it's 10 it makes it a little bit more difficult mathematically so I think uh, Lippy you've got 9 uh, Gordy's got 1 and me and Raj have done no prep um, but no jokes aside I, I've got the Titans and I think it's really difficult when you kind of start to look through it because you're trying to find some of those talking points and um, for me, I think that, you know, the balance of their side, they've got some awesome and really proven international T20 players over the age of 30. I, I include, um, you know, Kane in that, uh, Matthew Wade, David M- Miller, not quite 30 years old, but Captain Hardy Pena as well, who's obviously moved franchises um, and was phenomenal for them last year, wasn't he? Is, really is he was. playing, though, Paddock? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's available, fit and available player. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think we should, you should almost start there because I, I feel like it was a... Big surprise that they won last year. I, I know when you know when we look, looked through their lineup, it was it was very much there's some talent here, but you know I don't know you know first year can they put it all together? But the way hard it pulled that, all of that that together, mm. it was amazing last year, and and people seem people seem to lift being around him and, and the way he carried himself. Did so. Ridiman Saha play for Gujarat last year? Because yeah. I feel like Ridiman Saha had a really good year last year in the yeah. yeah, look, I, I've got that in my what might go wrong category, actually. So um, he opened the batting throughout the course of they swap keepers, I think, through the, mm-hmm. the through the through the, the, the tournament. Um, keeping wise he's you know he's pretty pretty Spot pure, on. right? Um, but he, his strike rate was only 122. And so I kind of wonder whether that's enough at the top of the order, the way that that, that game's going. But, um, you know, he's got to be the man in possession of the Gordon as you go into the tournament from last year, um, you, you would have thought. But 
yeah, that, that's probably one of the things I've got as as one of my little worries for, for for the Titans. Who are your overseas players in this lineup? Like you've got Kane, David Miller, Rashid Khan, Wade, Odian Smith, Nor Ahmed are the ones that I've got written down. Who do you think is the four that they'll take into most games? Yeah, so again, I think what, what I've kind of noted down here in terms of what you know what might go right. They've got a couple of exciting younger players in there, so I think uh, Josh Little, uh, the I Irish, love, he's, Irish. I'd love to see him get a go. Mm. Yeah, and, and look, I think he will. He had a fantastic T Twenty World yep. Cup um, in Australia. I, I also think Noor Ahmed, left arm wrist spin mm. um, from Afghanistan, is there obviously with his you know his his fellow countryman Rashid Khan. So you know, unlikely that they both play together, but I think again over the course of this tournament. Um, I think you're going to see players come in and out and matchups and, and mm. rest and rotation. So I think that those are probably the two um, that you know I'm looking forward to, to see play a little bit. But I think you've got to say that if Kane gets going, um, if David Miller gets going, you know that they're they're kind of locks really. And then I think you've got a little bit of flexibility across the, the way that they might um, they might pick their overseas players. The other thing that I've got as well, and this is going to be a, a little bit of a controversial one. Saw Rashid Khan in the big bash. A lot of teams just sat on him and went, mm. do you know what? We're going to take him for 24 or maybe 28 if we get a boundary because he bowls a bad ball. Mm. But we're not going to go after him. We're just going to sit on him a little bit and, and we'll target someone else. So I, I just, again, I think probably some of the game plans that, that people have got against Rashid now, mm. not to say people have worked him out because I don't think they have, but I think they've worked out that they can't work him out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, that, you know, that that's... Um, you know, that's that, one of the things. That that you know strategic element has actually worked for for yeah. in, in his favour, in his team's favour. Just you know allowing others to get wickets as well, and, and just having the pressure coming from one end. I actually have a question for you, Stu, and it's about um, Kane Williamson. Mm -hmm. So I guess at the Sunrisers, Hyderabad, you know, he was a lock, always picked. Do you think he has to prove something here, or is he uh, is he going to be a lock for uh, for the season? I don't know. I I think he. In some ways, I, I think he does. Well, I don't think he has anything to prove, but I think a lot he, you know, the general public. There was a we've talked about it a lot. There's been a lot of feeling about the way he bats in a, in a T20, and he he bats to try and win the game at the end. You know, be there at the end, and when that doesn't come off, it doesn't work. But I think actually this Gujarat side is perfectly built for someone like Kane to bat exactly the way he wants to bat. Because you've got David Miller, you've got Hardik Pandya, you know, you've got those guys in the middle that can just absolutely go bananas. And if Kane's there, I, I do think that he has, he should be, you know, you're talking about Saha, you know, Gil, Gil, I think Williamson needs to be in that, top, you know, if not opening in that top three at least, mm -hmm. and again, kind of be in that mix and someone that does anchor innings. I think they could have similar issues you want to call it an issue that New Zealand sort of got in with Devin Conway and Williamson, and that Gill and Williamson could become a similar ish. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I reckon Gill can get on with it. I know he can get on with it, and so can Devin Conway, but I don't, you know, Gill likes to, I think, bat the, the overs as mm. well. So but yeah. if, you, if you have a look at that top seven, like that ideal top seven for Gujarat is Gill, Williamson, maybe Ridu and Sahar at three. Pandia, David Miller, Rahul Tawatia, and Matthew Wade. Mm. Like they are the perfect people to bat around Kane Williamson because all of the all of the rest of the top seven, other than maybe Sahar and Williamson, can go at 180 plus from a strike rate point of view. So they've got four guns ready to go. And it's a case of making sure I think that Sahar, if he's batting at 120 strike rate, as you said, and Williamson don't get stuck together. But Williamson in the World Cup final. 88 off, what, 45, 50 balls. He can get on with it, right? I think it's oh, just yeah. got to be and, the, you know, the right kind of format. And that was a few years ago now. I do think that when they you know, when they are thinking about the balance of that overseas lineup, and if they want to try and get Josh Little or someone into that, that lineup, you know, maybe the Williamson is the kind of person they start to think about, yeah, he you know, anyway. well, what can we do? Or it's Matthew Wade. And, yeah, and or maybe... Matthew Wade kicks with you, which gives them an extra, almost an extra spot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I do... Your point, I think there is a little bit to prove because if he comes back and, and does really, really well in this tournament, there's going to be a lot of, yeah, a lot of a lot of all the stuff that everyone's been talking about for the last 12 months about Kane. A lot of that disappears very quickly when you perform well in an IPL. Mm. Yeah. And, and look, I've got Sean McGill as my one to watch. Um, in the last 10 games of cricket he's played across all formats, he's got 100 in each format mm. uh, within his last 10 months and fifth lead in runs scored in the IPL last year, so... Um, yeah, I, I think that's a good. Uh, yeah, it's a good start. I thought you'd be pleased with that. <laughs> um, let's move on because we're 
again, remarkably running almost on time here. So we're going to move on to the KKR, seventh in 2022. Um, this is another one that I've, I think, consistently picked in. A little bit like, you know, if someone's ever been to Rickerton, um, I've got to pick KKR as long as uh, Dre Russ is there. Lucky enough to have played a club cricket season with him. He will always be my player to watch. Um, so any other bets uh, for KKR player to watch, uh, not going to be He's been out. still just going around the, the T20 circuit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has just been, you know, keeping his platinum status on every single <laughs> airline. Um, and, yeah, lo loving his best Instagram life for, you know, for the last two or three years. And just every single video of him hitting a six in range, hitting sounds like <laughs> a bloody sniper rifle. It's... It is something to behold, it really is. But low expectations for well, the KKR. Tell, tell us what, what can go right with this team, because I've looked at the lines of bidding too, and I think these guys are very undervalued. Y yeah, so look, what can go right? It, it's good when my notes for what can go right start with low expectations. <laughs> and outside of Dre Russ, low on huge international stars. But they do have some wily old characters. They've got uh, David Wieser, they've got Yuma Shadav, they've got Shaqib, they've got Sonil Narine. And I think when you actually look at that, if they gel as a team, which I think, um, you know, they've got some players there. Um, and I think what's important for me is the way that you pick up overseas players now isn't just about getting the absolute big names. It's actually picking guys like Visa, like Shaqib, like Nareen, like Dre Russell. And the people, Southie and Lockie as well. Southie, 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 Southie in particular has got all of that experience. And, and who go into a franchise and build a culture um, so I, I, I agree with you. I think that that combination and that fact that they'll probably be, you know, written off a little bit as a little bit of a dad's army, uh, I think could actually play in their favour. So that's, you know, that's what um, might go right for them. But conversely, I guess it's what might go wrong. You know, they're, they're, other than Dre Rush, they've not really got any great players. Um, and I think also probably, their, you know, their Indian um, Indian contingent is a bit of a concern. Um, big loss, I think, Shreyas Iyer pulling out yeah, of the tournament. Yeah, that's, that's a huge, yeah. Um, huge. And, and, and Chakrabarti, I think, really, you know, going to be key with the ball for them as well. So that, that, that's what I've probably got uh, written down across the across the KKR. Yeah, bowling lineup's pretty solid. Like, Jagadish and Shadul Thakur, Uma Shadav, Saudi slash Lockie Ferguson. Bra I've got those bracketed Lockie when available. Yeah. That Saudi, you know, uh, well, available. Quite a good season. Unrated yeah. season for them. He's good, he's good. He's good. He's good T20 bowler. But, you know, the question is, with all of those other Indian bowlers, do you need out and out pace? This is a massive, um, massive iteration of the IPL for uh, Shadul Thakur. He, he mm -hmm. has been going the distance in a lot of games. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of emails, the emails to return <laughs> the balls to the stadium yeah. uh, when he's been bowling have, have been up there as well. So uh, it's a big one burn for me. Mm. Yeah. How, how, yeah, much he's got, he's got how much do we think McCullum's departure plays on this? I, I actually had a question on, the, on their coaching lineup. So I, I actually tried to rate all their coaching lineups sort of, you know, one through ten. And there's a big unknown about Pundit as a coach. I don't know much about him. I don't know how much he's going to be able to bring those those big names together as a unit. I wonder if it's more of a Ronald McDonald facilitation role and it's actually Saudi and Russell and Narine and Shakib as the big, big name veteran players who actually do oh, most geez. of the coaching. I don't, I don't know that I'd have Shakib in my leadership group, but anyway. Yeah. I, he's played a lot of games. He is. Yeah, I, I guess he does. I think you've got to look at it that, you know, th this is a franchise, and, and look, a lot of the franchises are in a similar scenario. Mm. They are now an organisation that plays in a number of different tournaments and they build a structure around that. So losing your head coach, if they've done what they should have done and they've worked with the director of cricket or player development or whatever fancy title you want to give the guy mm. that, that doesn't wear the tracksuit and, you know, sits in the sponsor's box and, uh, with a lanyard on, if they've got that right um, in terms of that structure, then the departure of your head coach shouldn't have that, you know, that bigger, uh, bigger impact. Mm. That's not to the detriment of someone like McCullum, who clearly builds culture in a group. Yeah. But if he's done his job, he's built that culture, and just like a good yogurt, it's multiplied and <laughs> gives good bacteria in your gut uh, wow. for years and years to come. I didn't expect that analogy. Didn't you know, expect that, 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 is a, that is a new analogy on this podcast. <laughs> well done. Um, um, off the top of my head as well. <laughs> um, anyway, let's move on. Um, so. Uh, yeah, this confused the hell out of me in the Slack channel. So this is the look now, not the super giant. No, no, they're not just regular giants. Not they just are super giants. Not just regular giants. They're, yeah. they're, they're the super giants. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, betting for these guys fifteen to two. Um, so what does that even mean? So it's that, basically uh, 50, right? seven, seven, and half, seven and a half to one. I thought you were a good yeah. guess. Um, and the KKR at eleven to one as well. So um, 
They are the longest priced in the tournament. The KKR. You get your dollar back if you're betting in that zip fifteen. But that is so that is value. I reckon. Cash Sorry, value, value, value each you, way pick. There you, you bet, go. bet on them and then you lay off later. In the, yep. in the I lo- I like they're not just regular giants, uh, and I'll tell you for why. You talk about giants. Kale Rahul and Quinton de Kock at the top of the order. He's quite short. Isn't he? Quinton he, but he's but he's a giant in, in yeah. ability. He's got he's got off, off, he off, off a thousand runs in that game that South Africa played against. Didn't they? They, 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 they just chased down two fifty nine against the West Indies. That's unbelievable. And he got his hundred, I think, if I'm right in saying, ten point four overs. He brought incredible incredible balls in it. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So that's they they're the big they're the big names for. Um, for the Lucknow Super Giants, and then you've got a, a reasonably good middle order, actually. To be fair, Nicholas Puran, Deepak Huda, who's come along nicely in the last two or three years, um, and has really developed into a player of international quality. Uh, Marcus Stoinis, uh, the not quite so fancy Krunal Pandya, the smaller brother of Hardik Pandya, but still a very, very good cricketer. Um, <laughs> smaller brother. That's not often how you hear of. Hear of uh... Right. And then and then they've got a really Have you got the stats for that. Is he, <laughs> there, is he genuinely is, smaller? Well, it, this tour. any anyone compared to Hundik Pandya is is the smaller brother of. But look, I like their bowling lineup: Mark Wood, Ahmed Mishra, Avesh Khan, Unad Khat, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. Krunal Pandya, and then some overs from Marcus Stoinis and a couple of others. That's a pretty good bowling lineup. I don't mind that bowling lineup. And then they've got lots and lots of international depth. They've got Kyle Mayers. They've got Daniel Sams, Romario Shepherd. They've got Ravi Bishnoi, who's an Indian player, who's all, who also is a very, very good bowler. So I think there's lots to like in their bowling lineup. I think it's whether or not their four, five, six of Puran Huda and Stoinis comes off for them. Because Puran hasn't had a great IPL for a couple of years. Stoinis was good in the World Cup, but hasn't reached 50 and like 27 um, white ball innings, something ridiculous like that. So he needs to have a really, really big tournament. So just uh, you know, mentioned the bowlers there. Mark Wood is one of the overseas players. Mm-hmm. And I want to ask you this question generally about the English. Do, do you think that a guy like Wood or Joffre Archer we're going to come into uh, are going to have limits that they would like them to to be kept to? Or workload management yeah. styles? I don't think so. I don't think so? All out? Yeah, I, I, think that, I think that they're giving a lot of trust now to the, the fact that they are open with the franchises. Um, I think the medical team for the ECB work very closely with the SNC coaches and the medical staff at these franchises and, and I think also they give a, a, a massive amount of trust to the player as well to make those those calls mm. and you've got to think that definitely Mark Wood um, wants to play you know in, in that Ashes series and he knows that he's not going to play five games in that Ashes series mm. so I think he's going in there with you know if I'm, I'm likely to play maybe two maybe three at a push in, in that Ashes series if Joffre's fit um, if Ollie Stone's fit as well, you know, they're going to rotate. Chris Wokes, I think, um, you know, from a, we won't go on to the test match piece, but I, I, I think that they, they'll have that mindset that they know they're not going to need to be ready for a five test match summer. Mm. They're going to be need to be, need to be ready for a, um, a three test match summer with that island test match where they'll probably play some of those fringe guys like a, an Overton or something like that. He's, he's, he's one guy that I really, free, right? yeah, I, he's one guy yeah. that I really want to watch in this team because if you have a look at their bowling attack, he is a massive, massive point of difference. And look, he's got a great bowling coach. Like if you have a look at the coaching, the coaching lineup for look now, Andy Flower, Galtam Gambia, Mornay Morkel, and John T. Rhodes. So that's a pretty good like bowling coach, batting coach, fielding coach lineup. Um, I think they'll get the most out of that talent, and but I I really want to see Mark Wood unleashed um, on some of these on some of these. Um, is this your is he your game breaker, the one you're staying up for? With the ball is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Quinton de Kock with the bat and um, and Kale Rahul at the top of the order. Kale Rahul needs to have a big season because he's up against Gill, Darwan, um, Guy Quad, Prithvi Shaw, Rohit, Ishan Kishan. And like he's he, he, yeah, he's up against, uh, against who's that? He's a better, I think. Hmm. Um, scored a hundred the other day, but he's up against it to get to that to that fifty over World Cup squad. And the only way he does it is by is by getting his team into the playoffs yeah. and and scoring at a reasonable clip because he's been criticised for not scoring fast enough. Well, that's what I was going to say. You've talked about this team for five minutes. We can summarise <laughs> this team by saying that basically this team is going to play. Kyle Rahul is going to score a truckload of runs. Yes, and in every one in the whole. 
and everyone on social media is just going to be complaining about his strike rate yeah. for the whole tournament. That, that's that's the coverage of luck now that we'll Correct. get for the. For yes, the KL Rahul will score 500 runs at, an, at a strike rate of 130, yeah. and he will be the most pilliard of the 10 openers that we've just talked about. Yeah. Cool. Summarised. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Next. Next. <laughs> so we're, we're at the 40 minute mark. It's time for a musical interlude, isn't it? So we're, we're going to move on to the Mumbai Indians. Is someone going to do the song on that? No, they're not. No? We are not. We are not. No. I take it that you've got the Mumbai Indians for The yeah, sunrises right. of the musical, would you? Like? you yeah, you've got the sunrises, don't you? I do. But Excellent. You, well, you well, have the, the sunrises have got the song. Well, they've wow. both got the song. Right. Sunrises have got the song, but I don't know what they're going to do now with Kane uh, With Kane moving franchises. Kane was Did he leave his guitar, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, Mumbai. Back to Mumbai. Ball right. Ball. Mumbai Indians. Well, Mumbai Indians are chock full of talent. Odd numbered year. At the, yeah, good. Auspicious year for the Mumbai Indians. Disappointing last year. Wouldn't they finish 10th? In the, in yeah, the, they, they in got the, the wooden spoon. Stone, motherless last in the IPL last year. What happened this year, though? They'll be a much, much better cricket it's side. Seven to one in the betting. Seven to one. In, in, a, in a group of four teams at seven to one. Seven to one? Yeah. I feel like that's short. Anyway, continue. So value, perhaps? No, short. 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 Do you think that they're... I think they're coming down the bottom somewhere. Really? But anyway, you, you can... Well, that could be an interesting discussion after yeah, the fact. Still yeah. all your thunder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll step back now. Top four, Rohit, Ishan, Kishan. Uh, did I pronounce that correctly? Ishan, Kishan? Ish, yes. Yeah, yep. okay, cool. Uh, Surakumi Yadav, uh, Varma, and then Brevis, David, Cam Green, and some bowlers. It's quite a lot of firepower. Quite a lot of firepower in that top seven, Definitely right? Definitely pronounce Cam Green right. I, I believe I've got Green, mate. Yeah, nah, Cam. I've got him correct. Okay, so... Plenty of firepower in that top four, all Indian top four, which is huge because it means that they can spend their overseas resources on some combination of Brevis and David and Green in that middle order, um, while still having room for Jofra to go with Jasper Bumro. So they've got probably Bumrah's, the best. Bumrah's not done. Is he done? Yeah, no, at the tournament. Oh, well, that sucks for them. Okay, so then they're <laughs> okay. late scratching. Right. Not so, quite so late. He hasn't been playing for quite a while. Well, I thought he was going to be ready. I thought he was going to be bad. Yeah, okay, so... This is what happens when you get your list from ChatGPT. <laughs> it's, it's, Saturday. it's out of date. Well, okay, so that makes, it, that makes it really interesting, right? Okay, so now I have that piece of intelligence. It You're means chat that... GPT. Fantastic. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> the audio listeners are missing some great visuals from Bully here. Right. Okay, so now they've got a problem, right? Because... <laughs> <laughs> DeWalt Brevis, uh, Tim David and Cameron, and Cameron Green. They can only play two of them. They've paid Cameron Green about £45 million, pounds, so they have to play him. <laughs> they they probably have to play Tim David, which means DeWalt Brevis probably misses out, or they do a horses for courses approach, because Joffre Archer, you would think, would play most games. And now they have to find a fast bowler to replace Boomer. So that's someone like Jai Richardson or, or maybe Jason Berendorf. I'd be playing Jai Richardson because he's... Much, much better bowler. Um, <laughs> That's usually a good reason to play someone. Yeah. Um, but they're going to have to get some overs out of the rest of that lineup. So they've got Kuyash Chola, Ashad Khan, Jai Richardson, and Archer. That's four. Now you've got to get overs out of Cameron Green, effectively, or some kind of combination of whoever bats five and six, which is a bit of a problem. And, and, and that's one concern. But another concern I have for, for Mumbai is, you know, like. Rohit Sharma, he's a class, class batsman, but he has been struggling mm -hmm. uh, of late. And the last edition of the IPL wasn't great for him. Surya Kumar Yadav looks like he's forgotten how to bat in the last month. Hattrick. Um, well, he can't be, he can't oh, be he's out of not form. He hasn't enough. He hasn't faced enough balls. <laughs> he hasn't faced enough balls. He hasn't faced enough balls. He hasn't faced enough three golden duck. Anyway. But look, it's happened to the best of them. Yep, that <laughs> happened in the one-day game. You know, the one-day game is so different now to the 20 game. Maybe it'll be different for them. But those two are massive for them. And they weren't, or especially Ronit yep. wasn't on last year. Fair. And they ended up with the, the wooden spoon. And now, and now they have the opposite. At the opposite end of, end of the, the game, if you will, they have bowling issues as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the problem about top four for me. None of them turned their arm over. That would be very, very useful if you could get yeah. a couple of overs a day off spin out of someone. Correct. Yeah, that, that is that is a bit of a challenge in that, yeah, those top four don't really bowl, which means you've got to get something out of five and six. But who's who's your, your game breaker? Well, the, anyone in the top four. I, I actually think that Ishan Kishan could be could be the one to stand up. Um, we know that we know what Rohit can do. Is he going to do it? Who knows? We know what Surya Kumar Yadav can do. Ishan Kishan and Tilak Bama are the two that I really want to see step up and perform consistently. 
for Mumbai to climb off the bottom of the table and challenge for the top four. Mama was um, a fun find last year. Wasn't he it? was. He. I think he's a a, bad year. a really really good talent. Yeah. Um, he's got a he's got a lot to prove that it, you know that he doesn't have a you know a sophomore slump. What, um, um, what what role do you see Tim David playing? Is it that closer role again? I think so. I, just know I, I think it's I think it's really hard for, for for Mumbai now because without Bumrah they need another international bowler to come in to balance mm. their bowling attack. So they're going to have to choose between Deval Brevis and Tim David. I think they choose Tim David because he's a, I think at this point he's a better cricketer. He's a better cricketer. Um, but then they have to find an uh, an all rounder at five or an all rounder at six or whatever. So. So that's going to be the challenge is that Tim David doesn't really bowl. None of the top four really bowl. So they've got five players out of their, out of their unit that, that don't bowl. And they've much. got Jofra, who I would love to see him have an awesome season. But, you know, it's, he's had his own injury troubles for yeah, a long, long pretty, time. He's looked pretty good. He did, yeah. Wise, touch wood. I, I hope so. Just, I hope yeah. so. I really great. hope that he has a injury-free tournament. It would be oh, great yeah. to see. Him. Yeah. Oh, he, he's, it, it would be incredible to watch him. And he yeah, bowled rapid in that uh, in that recent England series as well. Yeah. Got the speed going up. Uh, what about the coaching staff? Board? You're not mentioned. <laughs> I haven't mentioned the coaching staff. Let me yeah, go. They've got a new chef, a new yeah. sh- chef, a new yoga coach, maybe. Uh, no, Mark Boucher. Okay. No, but but friends Jeez. of the podcast in the Mumbai Indians it's coaching a pretty good, staff. You put a pretty good team together with the uh, yep. coaches there. Boucher, Pollard. Friend of the podcast Shane Bond, and also friend of the podcast James Pammett. So they've got some credentials in terms of their in terms of their coaching setup, and also friendly uh, friendly to the podcast. So I think they've got one of the better coaching staffs, to be fair, at Mumbai Indians, and they're always well organised. You know, they'll, they'll always find someone. Some will will emerge from their group of twenty luck players who performs well for them throughout the season and, and earns himself a big contract. Uh, Mahalisson involved? Yes. Yeah. yeah cool. So he's there. Involved. Oh, so, so I know this is you know something you don't want to sort of say these things you know out of step or ahead of time. Mm. Is this the, the the if they don't go well this season? Is this kind of the end of the uh, Mumbai Indians dynasty, if you will, in the IPL? Well, I think they've. I mean, they've lost a lot of the players that formed that dynasty, right? So that a lot of the players that were part of that Mumbai dynasty have either retired or moved on to other franchises. So it has been broken up, kind of circle of you know Bulls 1994, 95, Bulls nineteen ninety nine. They've broken up the big. Um, the big group that was so successful for them, but they've got they've got good players in there. They just have to get the best out of them. If Rohit, if Sky, if Kishan, if David or Green has an inconsistent season, then they're going to end up at the bottom of the table. But if they all perform well, then they could be a top four side. And to, just to continue with you that um, analogy, which one of the squad is Rodman? Um, well, I'm just trying to think of the. I, I don't. I, I don't actually want to answer that question because so pop, pop it, pop it in the comments or drop us an email. At the, the, the top order podcast Which the, Mumbai the, Indians player is most most famous? Well, well the, the the biggest question is is who's going to be the guy who steps up in the absence of Michael Jordan, which would be all all eyes on Cameron Green. Now he's a big play player. He's only three million dollars, I think, if, if, if memory serves. He's going to have to be at the age of 22, 23, whatever he is now, a really big, important cog in that wheel for, for them with bat and ball. He's got to do the business with the ball, and I don't think we've seen the best of him yet uh, from a white ball bowling perspective. So there's there's lots of payment on potential there for Cameron Green. We'll see what he does. Awesome. Let's move on. Uh, so we've now got the Punjab Kings. We do. Uh, Next, is this back to you, Stu? Back to me, yep, yep. Another sort of middling side. I seem to have accumulated a few sides that. Yeah, had pretty average seasons last year. A side that, you know, finished sixth. I think they sort of won seven, lost seven. Never real like, ne- you know, were on the fringes of the playoffs all year, but never really looked like a true contender. Lost Johnny Besto. He's not playing for the, you know, for the tournament. Bringing in Matthew Short, who is someone who didn't watch the BBL. I don't know. Is, it, do you, is he going to be a big player? Is that actually like, you know, you guys talked about Salt before being someone who, you know, it wasn't on the radar before, short coming in, is he someone that can just come in and, and straight away hit the ground? Well, I, I, I question whether or not he's going to play all that much because if you have a look at the, the guys who are locked in, I would imagine Rabada's locked in from a bowling perspective, Sam Curran likewise, Liam Livingston, that makes three. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're looking at Nathan Ellis, who's a specialist death bowler, um, Roger Paksa from Sri Lanka, um, or was Matthew good last year. Who, who, was, who was good, um, or Matthew Short. So there's no guarantee, I think, that Matthew Short plays in this side. And it really depends on how much batting they need. I've got some questions around who bats at the top of the order for them alongside Shikdawan, 
Liam Livings is probably best at number four, you would think. Somewhere maybe, around even, maybe even five, six. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there is a question really around who bats at the top of the order for that side. Um, and so maybe Short does get a go from that point of view. But yeah, YJB being out for this team is a huge out because he naturally slots in at the top of the order. He's a great foil for Dale on left right-handed. Um, keeps wicket, does all the right things. Red-headed fella. Yeah, I, 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 I don't want to speak in ill of um, Short, but he's not he's not a like for like for for best. Oh, 100 percent. He has he has been playing well in the Australian um, Big Bash. He was top run scorer. I think he's been doing well in the Shield and stuff. So he does come in with form, but yeah. you know, he's not the proven international sensation that is for yeah. the best. And, and look, not the forum for it, but there is a big gap now as well between I think the IPL and and the, and the Big Bash. You probably would have said it was the second. Best franchise tournament. I, I don't think it is anymore. I, mm. I think it's been diminished by salary cap and availability. Mm. Availability of overseas yeah, players. Yeah, I also think the, the just the swap or the you know the reverse conditions of Australia versus India is actually quite important as well. Yep. We haven't seen Matthew Shaw in the subcontinent. No, mm. we haven't. Yeah, it's a good point. And, and I think all the things you touched on there are probably where I think it goes wrong for them. I, I don't. I, I have big concerns about this banning. It feels very light. It feel it feels light in the sense that. You know, you've got players like Darwin, Livingston, Rajapaksa, you know, all of these guys. I think they'll put in enough strong performances to kind of have a middling season again. Like, they'll mm. probably win, you know, six or seven games, but never really You think it's going like, to be that many? Well, you know, I, like, yeah. I, I think they've got players in there, like, that will win enough games, probably more on their bowling side. Mm. You look at that bowling lineup, it's Rabada, Ashdeep, Sam Curran, who, you know... Star of the T20 World play. Cup final, obviously. Yep. You know, he's someone who could, they, they could say... He's also a top four batter in the IPL, I think. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. I have him in the top four. He's someone they could throw up the top of the order and, mm. and really give that, you know, boost that lineup up depth. From a sort of checkpoint stats, you can see these guys getting to 80 off 10 and then one of those, Liam Livingston coming off and getting, you know, 120 off the last 10. Yep. So they can, they can put up that 200 score, but probably not as consistent. consistently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is, that's pretty much exactly right. And you know, the, you went through all of the um, all of the overseas players. The one I would love to watch is Sikandaraza, who you didn't mention because, again, you know, all these sort of stars of the T Twenty World Cup that played in the you know the lesser nations. That he was fantastic, and he he was someone who seemed to rise in those big moments. And I kind of feel like you know he's obviously just um, been in the um, PSL and delivered in, in that tournament. I hope they pick him. I, I, would, I just can't see how I, they I can. Think, I think he would rise in this this tournament, and he gives you a bit of all round quality. Mm. Yeah, you know, again, I don't know. I, I don't know how they in. get him in. I don't know. Honestly, without like, you have to leave one of Curran, Livingston, Rabada, or like Short, um, Roger Puxa, or Ellis out. Like, it's, he's got a lot of competition for that last spot, effectively in that team, yeah, uh, which is a shame. I haven't heard anyone mention mention uh, Sam Curran. Is this when he? Sort of reincarnates Jack Callis, for example, Binksy. Ah, <laughs> uh, look, I think that that ship's probably sailed, and I'll probably admit that now. He's, he, I don't think he's going to have a ten thousand run Test career. Um, but look, he, he had a fantastic uh, World Cup in Australia, um, and I, 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 I still think he has the potential to be a better batter than bowler. I um, mean, international cricket and even franchise cricket. So. Mm-hmm. Um, he was given a bit more responsibility with the bat last year. I think we'll see that continue this year as well. In all seriousness, he, 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 I expect him to be the best bowler and up there with the bat in this team mm-hmm. uh, to control it. So I think he's going to get lots of opportunities. He's a good addition. And, and, for and, and that's a big call. I think you're expecting him to be the big bowler. Like to, that's high praise when it's a team with uh, you know Kagisa Ravada and Ashdeep Singh, who I think has yeah. you know had an awesome, yeah, awesome really looking forward to seeing him bowl. Yeah, he's like he's, a, he's a fun bowler to watch. So. Even though he, even though he doesn't bowl spin, he's still quite fun to watch. <laughs> there you go. Look on that revelation. I think it's time to move on. Lippy likes a, a, a bowling type other than off spin, uh, but the Punjab Kings ten to one in the betting. So uh, down the bottom, probably fear we get a KKR and the Sunrisers who will will come on to. Um, let's move on to Rajasthan Royals. So. Uh, of course, inaugural IPL champions way back in what was it, two thousand and three or something like that. Eight, eight. 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 Yeah, eight. I've, I've got. I'm, I'm a few years off. Um, second last year, twenty twenty two, uh, at bet three six five, they are seven to one. Um, 
I've got what goes right is that their batting just looks amazing. Uh, yeah, Sampson, Butler, Hetmeyer, Root, Padakal, Jaiswal. Uh, not sure on the seaming is what I've got. Um, so, you know, I can see a situation where um, their seam attack does go, um, we've said it before, uh, does go air miles. I think obviously uh, good, you know, good pickup last year with Trent Bolt. Um, but I think, you know, people will try and line up. Um, Ovid McCoy and, and potentially even Jason Holder, although you know he is a, a proven international um, player. But I think their spinning again looks really, really good with Zampa, Chahal, and, and Ashwin. Um, so again, it's going to be how do they fit? Um, I think they're you know they're overseas players in particular. If they can unlock the secret to keeping those runs down uh, when when they're bowling, keeping the opposition's runs down, they're almost unbeatable. Their their their, their batting lineup is absolutely incredible. Mm. Joe, Joe Root. Uh, yeah, that's a name that, I had that, that I wanted that, to ask really, about. Yeah. I asked the question, Wally. No, you asked the question, Raj. <laughs> uh, Raj, can you ask a question about Thank you. I'm glad you asked that. Um, <laughs> Joe, Joe Root, where do you think he fits into this this line? I've obviously been out of the IPL for a he number just, of years yeah. now, yeah. Um, and the you know sort of 2020 setup even for England. So where does he fit in this, uh, uh, Binksy? Uh, look, I think he fits in their best batting lineup. Um, I, I think he's in there ahead of. Um, from an overseas perspective, he's in there ahead of Hetmeyer for me. Um, you know, in that pantheon of, uh, of batting that they've, they've, they've absolutely got. I think you've only got to look at the way that he's approached his test cricket. I think um, really understands his game very, very well. He's got some trick shots now as well. Mm. And I think, to be honest, he's always um, he's always had those. Um, and, and look, I, I think it, it, it's a little bit harsh that a guy that's averaging 35 in T20 international cricket at a strike rate of 126... He's playing in his, you know, his first IPL. Uh, it, it's absolutely ridiculous for me. Mm. That, um, I, look, his first IPL. I, I think it's wow. his first IPL, and um, and I think obviously he, he didn't go into the auction when he was in captain. So you know, there's some there's some mitigation yeah. there. But th- there's no reason for me that he he can't go and score in the kind of strike rate that you would expect of of a, an international player of his. Undoubted quality. I, I look. I, I just. I want to watch him back. I really do. Mm. Um, I think. I think he could potentially be one of the best players in this tournament. Well, the, the exciting thing for me about him is we saw it in the in the test series uh, down here when he was here. He's literally got a three sixty game, but yeah, probably yeah. one of the best best three sixty games that, that that's going around. And they're just not going to have enough fielders uh, to, to to slow him down. I, I think he also plays spin really well, yeah. which yeah. is a which is a really really big factor. So I think that. I, look, I've got to say he's on my list of who I want to watch. I also want to watch Ashwin because you just never know what he's going to get, do next. So um, we'll, we'll come on to the rule changes, but you know Ashwin will you know certainly have studied the rule book with forensic mm-hmm. detail, and we'll, we'll find uh, an anomaly there that he can exploit. No doubt. Thinks he who's in your who's in your sort of best eleven bowling attack for these guys because they've got Ashwin, they've got Holder, they've got Chahal, they've got Navdeep Saini, Trent Bolt. And Prasad Krishna and McCoy Krishna's and out. Krishna's out. As Krishna's out. Chat, okay. bit, chat okay. GPT letting you down again. Well, Wikipedia's let me down in terms of the squad names here, because if he's out, then that makes it a little bit easier. But you've still got McCoy, you've still got Zampa. Who's in your first choice bowling attack? Uh, that, that's a really good question. I definitely think Bolt's in my first choice bowling attack. I think Ashwin's in my first choice bowling attack. I then think I'm essentially taking one of Zampa or Chahal. Yep. Um, and then I, I think they'll alternate potentially Holder and McCoy from yep. a matchups perspective. Uh, can I have a go at answering that question? I actually think it almost doesn't matter. Like it, it's one of those ones where they can interchange players and not lose too much in terms of skill. With that, with that, that, very with deep. That, yeah. I, I agree. I think, the depth in that, I think that depth in that bowling attack is really you, something to you like. You mentioned the rule changes that we haven't really touched on, and the subs, you know, impact sub or impact player or whatever it's called that have, we've seen this, you know, it was the KFC zingonator. It's a, yeah, it's, it's, we've yeah. seen this iteration of, you know, a sub, essentially a, a substitute. Mm. Yeah, in you know, lots of different. It's been in international cricket. It's it's been in, um, you know, there all these franchise tournaments around mm. the world. A so team like third, this in the third grade of Auckland club cricket as well. You name twelve. There you, go. Yeah, there you go. A team like this, I think, actually can benefit from that yeah. because they can put guys, you know, like like they could, they could bowl, they could bowl Trent Bolt up front for a couple of overs and then bring on Obed McCoy or something to, you know, bowl at the death or like mm-hmm. that. Like you said, there are so many interchangeable players mm-hmm. that they can mix and match and stuff. I I, I think that it forgive suits my, someone like this. Forgive my ignorance, Stu, but are there any writers around how you use your replacement? Like in the Big Bash, they couldn't have batted and they could have bowled the only one over. 
Are there any kind of caveats or riders around how you use your replacement in the IPL, or is it just one player you help for let it just do what you want? No, I believe it's the same thing. You know, yeah. like you can't, I don't think that Trent Bolt can bowl four and then you bring an Obi McCoy to bowl another four at the death. Right. I don't think it's like that. I'm pretty sure it's the same sort of setup as, as before. Mm -hmm. You cannot have more than four overseas players in your lineup. So obviously if they wanted to replace an overseas player, they can replace them with another overseas player, but you can't, you know, bring in an overseas player and end up having five overseas yeah, yeah, players, yeah. you know, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, you know, there's still all of the, the core rules still apply, but yeah, I think the, why I think, you know, the, the depth and the, the balance of the squad, and we talked about big time last year, and for some reason, I think their odds last year were very, very low, and, you know, you look at this lineup again, and you, well, I, I look at them and think, I love this grid, so they've got to be right up there, yep. near the top is, unless things, like, where can it go wrong for them? Yeah, I, I think that I haven't got anything written down, to be honest, for, for where it can go wrong. I think I think the only, you know, the only thing is really getting the matchups right from a seeming perspective, mm. making sure someone like Holder doesn't get lined up and, and, and go through our miles. Um, I think probably the biggest thing is going to be how they keep everybody in their roster motivated and um, you know ready to play because mm -hmm. I think you know they're clearly going to have a best 11 in mind um, so it, it's probably how do they engage if it is you know Shimon Hetmeyer who kind of misses out from an overseas batting perspective you know we, we know he's had some sort of disciplinary issues and you know my bat my ball issues previously <laughs> whether or not they can keep him you know keep him motivated mm -hmm. um, but yeah it's seven to one I think um, yeah that, those are yeah that, that, those are probably where the odds uh, deserve to be for, for for the Royals. Whilst we're on the rules, I think the other major rule change is two team sheets at the toss. So you can have um, a team sheet for when you bat first and one when you bowl first. Presumably, you can just have the same one for both uh, <laughs> and keep it really, really simple. And um, do we think that that's going to have an impact too much on the on the tournament? Or you know, again, is it a little bit like the the baconator and the zinganator and all just a bit of a, a bit of a what's the word novelty? Well, I was going to say yeah. We can say novelty. I, I I think it can. I mean, I don't know. Naming, yeah. If you can, if you know you're batting first or know you're bowling first, I think that's pretty significant on how you how you set up your side. And um, whether again, I think it's a it benefits squads that have good depth and, and good area. You know, they have all their bases covered mm. because if you cover all your bases, then no matter what you're doing on the in terms of the game scenario you can use all of the tools that you have. And if you're, if you're very strong, if you, you know, if you don't have good spinners and you're batting second, you obviously can't, you know, you can't change your side to, to suit that. I think it's also around, you know, whether, you know, first innings is in, in the daytime and second innings is at yeah, night. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, we've seen, with, well, I think it was with, Rahul Chaha. With, with the junior coming. Yeah. yeah. It was Chaha, Deepak yeah. Chaha. was just swinging around corners yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, at night time. So, yeah, I think that makes a difference, I guess. Mm. I think that I think the dew will play a bit of a factor in in who you might want to pick in your bowling lineup. Maybe if it swings a little bit more at night time or whatever, you might pick a, a swing bowler as opposed to a death bowler or a spinner or something like that. I think it will affect bowling lineups more than batting lineups. Absolutely. For Virat Kohli fans, we've reached that stage of the podcast. Raj, Excellent. I can tell he's getting excited just sitting next to me here uh, to talk about the RCB. I feel like I feel like every time I talk about RCB, it's like. Oh, here we go again. You know, they're a great <laughs> side. But I'm telling you, you cannot sleep on these guys ever. They have got such a star-studded lineup. I think that, what have they gone? They've gone fourth, third, third in the last three years. And that's without Virat Kohli on the team, it seems. He hasn't been scoring any runs, but he has been there, but just not scoring any runs. I just think they're packed with superstars. You can't sleep on them. Guys, what do you think? I completely agree. I completely agree. They've got such superpower at the top. Four, five. Do you want to read some names out and we'll tell you who's out of the tournament? Yeah, okay. <laughs> but well, it's, good. it's a great question. Is, so, are uh, William Topley playing? Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, okay. I, I think they're all right. Hazelwood is out for half of it, but I think he's going to be fit for the other half, if I'm correct. Yes. Which, which half's he fit for? Uh, the second half. I didn't know that. That's news to me. Did you know that one? I, I didn't know I think he's still recovering from some kind of strain. Okay, so it's very likely he does just turn up for the start of the season. Could be, well. yeah, okay. yeah. I've got no mail that's been accurate so far, so yeah. why would I have accurate <laughs> mail on, on whether or not Josh Hazel would fit to play? Look, that's, that, that's the stuff that I talk about that's going to go right for them. They've got a great team. If, if half of them come off, they go a long way to winning every game they play. But the issue is that it could all very much go wrong, like it has over the last few years, where they just haven't come close to winning it. Um, it really, it, 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 
have they gone to the final once, maybe? I don't, I don't think it's bad. No, I don't. Final? I don't think so. Well, really? I, yeah. They. The thing is that they. Yeah, they. They're always in with a chance, and they always feel like a side that everyone's getting behind, and then yeah, it just it doesn't happen for them. Well, where I think it could go wrong is I think that they're going to struggle. You know, when we've talked about Rajasthan, yeah. right? They've got interchangeable bits everywhere. I think that RCB are going to struggle to nail down what their best eleven looks like. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look at their overseas players. You've got Faf, who's the captain. Must play pretty much. Yep. Hasaranga, must play I pretty so. much. Yep. Josh Hazelwood, if he's available, must play pretty much. And that leaves Maxwell. Glenn Maxwell. Is he Probably a must, must play? play? I don't know. They, they, I'm going to come to a hot take at the end of this one on Glenn Maxwell. But okay. then you've got Fennell and you've got Michael Bracewell, who are probably in the unlucky category. Mm-hmm. Probably, probably won't get on the field. And then you've got the complications, Reese Topley, uh, David uh, Willie as well. Great white ball bowlers. How do you leave them out of the side as well? It's, it's, I think they're going to struggle to nail down that, that best 11. And it's not so much going to be horses for courses for them. It's just going to be who is, who, who's in form, who's taking wicket, who's scoring runs. Um, and I think they're just going to struggle nailing that down. Really interesting to have two overseas left on seam options, isn't it? You, you would think, because only one of them is going to play, right? So, yeah, that's it. And you've got to think one of them will play. Otherwise, it's a really weird but, set of selections. Who, so who, who, who do you leave out? Like, that's the like, problem. Who do you leave out? Yeah, and, um, yeah I just... I, I think their challenge when I looked at that side was I, I don't see the Indian court. You know, like, that, that. I think they're very reliant on those overseas players and, and, and Virat. And, you know, as you said, he's had awesome IPLs and he's had some very down IPLs. So, you know... What, what are we going to see? He looks, inc- like I said, it, uh, maybe a last podcast, a couple of podcasts ago, he looks really happy. Like, he looks like a guy who's, I don't know, kind of in a good space and, and you know, ready to have an awesome IPL. And th- that changes their that changes their landscape completely. Yeah, I completely agree. And, and you're right about that Indian convention. It's kind of, I think we've talked about this before with, with RCB, that 5-6 and the closer role. Who, who's that going to be? That sort of fifth, sixth bowling option. Mm. Who's that going to be? Mm-hmm, yeah. um, and that, that, that's another place that they struggle. But hopefully, these superstars that they do have that are local and their overseas players are going to propel them to winning this tournament. Can I ask you a question, Raj? Yes. What do you think RCB are going to get out of Dinesh Kartik this year? Because I feel like he really overachieved last year compared to sort of the years gone past. He was awesome for them last Look, year. If I'm completely honest, they're getting a keeper, right? He, yeah. he, he, he is the keeper that they need in their team. <laughs> yep. And last year, he fit into that 5-6 role, closing down innings. Yep. There's no reason he can't do it again. He's yep. at home, in familiar conditions. Why not? Have Why you got not? a hot take about... You've got a hot take. <laughs> I've got a hot take. Have you got a hot take, take about... I want to know who you want to watch as well. And it can't be yeah. cold, eh? No, okay. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll start with the, what we're going to watch first. Uh, it's kind of probably... I'm probably cheating, but... What I would stay up to watch is actually RCB's batting. All the way down, they've collectively got incredible strength. Faf, Virat, the big show, uh, and you know Finn Allen or, or Michael Bruce will get a go. Just watching those guys all bat will be something I stay up to watch. Mm. Hot take here. Um, this is this could be very controversial. I think that RCB would win more matches if they played Bracewell instead of Glenn Maxwell. I love it. I don't agree, but I love it. That is my hot take. And I, my, my evidence here is if you take Glenn Maxwell's IPL career with the bat and the ball, average that out, Michael Bracewell can be more valuable to this particular team when it comes to winning games. He averages 10 with the ball across 16 matches, and he averages 7 runs less with the bat. I think that Michael Bracewell is more valuable to this team than Glenn Maxwell. I hope he proves me wrong. Uh, yeah. Glenn Maxwell, that does not Michael Bracewell. <laughs> well, the, the challenge for Glenn Maxwell is he's coming off a horrendous leg injury as well. So we don't actually know what sort of form he's in or what sort of fitness he's in. I've got no mail about whether or not he'll play. I'll be wrong, whatever I say. Um, but that is a concern. We're nearly at the end, boys. We've just got <laughs> one more team and predictions to go, just a lazy one minute, uh, one hour and nine minutes uh, in. Um, if you're still with us, do remember to go to the Sports Podcast Group. Um, Dot com and vote for us for Cricket Podcast of the Year. But we're going to move on to our final team, uh, another team with a song. Uh, it's the Sunrisers. Let me back to your thing. Sunrisers.
Yeah, we're, fantastic. We're, we're, we're fantastic letting, we're stuff. That, yeah. Fantastic uh, stuff. Yeah, that's going to get done on the copyright, isn't it? I've sung it in tune. Uh, yeah, well, definitely. And he has sung it in tune. So that's not a problem. Yeah, uh, that's. I mean, that's the biggest question for me. No, I said it before. Kane not being there does. You know, does he take the rights with him when he moves to Gujarat? Aidan Markram and Phillips were singing that song with him, so maybe you know, maybe that uh, it depends maybe who's left the backing track. Yeah. Or he gets well, the instrumental. It depends who's so, written the written yeah. the lyrics because they're the ones you know on the on the credits. Whoever's credited with the lyrics gets to gets to keep the rights to that song. But anyway. Any, any, cricket any cricket notes? Any cricket notes? That a young side, very young side last year, and, and somewhat and a team that we thought were going to struggle, and I think actually at the start of the season really exceeded expectations. Were a side that people were going, wow, Sunrise is a you know one of the one of the top sides, but then you know fell away towards the the back end of that tournament. They did retain a lot of that young core, let go Kane Williamson and brought in someone called Harry Brook, who people may have heard of in, in the past 12 months, has has gone okay. So, you know, a lot of whether that's a, a massive upgrade and, and probably in terms of T20 cricket and where they're at at the moment, I think it is. And, you know, you Tom Moody is also gone. Brian Lara is the coach. They brought in Adil Rashid. I think this is a side that, has had all that experience from last year and now is is building up and actually has a lot of the pieces to be a very, very dangerous uh, team in this tournament. How do you think Adil Rashid will go? Because he's not been picked up for, for a little while now. Um, probably closer to the end of his career than the start. Is he on the wane? I don't, I, I, I don't know. Probably take the view of the leg spinner and the off spinner in the room. But do, do you expect much from him in the tournament? I think it'll be... Oh, well, one, I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily think he's on the wane in terms of like I, when when I've seen him bowl recently. You know, admittedly, I haven't watched every England game, but you know, I, I think he's still a quality bowler and um, you know can deliver. And he's we, wily in, in, in he's all got sorts all of, lot of He's got a lot of variation. I, I think I think he's one of those guys that's just wily enough that he'll do a really good job at the IPL. Yeah, he's got enough variation just in terms of the way he uses angle and pace and. Just yeah. subtle variations and seeing. He's only got to go half a bat with in the IPL to think about that T20 job. World Cup final. You know, his pace is even in that final was yeah. sensational. Yeah. Way he changed it. And yeah. there are times when he can get tapped as well, but usually if that happens, he's actually taken with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. So I think I think he'll fit in well. Yeah. Whether he whether he plays, I don't know. I think they have a lot of questions to answer about that overseas contingent because also wicketkeepers another big question mark for them. You know, yeah. you, you look through their lineup and it, there's. Um, it's the likes of Plus, and, and everywhere he goes, Glenn Phillips seems to have WK by his name, even though he hasn't kept for a long time. You know, and, 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 and doesn't re- and doesn't really. Doesn't, I don't think. I think he'd rather bowl. Seems like he wants to bowl, but you know. So if if they're going to pick Plus, and who again, you know, just came off a, a yeah. massive hundred in the the ODI series for for South Africa, you know, obviously a, a good player, but you know, Markram, Harry Brook, Phillips, Klassen, Marco Janssen, Adil Rashid. It, it makes it hard. Zakil Hussain, yeah. you know, even even Faisal Haruki, who you know went to the BBL, obviously not left and very not very good circumstances, if uh, you know from what was alleged. But the guy can that guy can bowl as well. So they seriously have some talent. And then you do, do you think there's a lack um, looking through the the lineup there? Do you think there's a lack of match winners, big game? Players, you know, the likes of the, the Dre Russ or the Glenn Maxwell or Brett Coley or um, Michael Bracewell to, to sort of <laughs> stand up and win a game. That, that, is the, that is the one thing I did put down for where it can all go wrong because I think you're spot on that they have all of these players that I've just named, right? They're all still very, they haven't really proven themselves in the IPL, haven't necessarily proven themselves on the biggest of biggest stages in, in international cricket. They've all done, you know, very well in, in various parts, or they're very early on in their career. Even mm. the even the Indian players, you know, Washington Sundar, mm. Abhishek Sharma, Bhuvi Kumar, Bhuvi Kumar, Umran Malik, Natarajan, Agal, Agarwal, Tripathi. Yeah. I mean, that when I name all of those, that's an amazing Indian core, I think. But again, like it's not, it isn't those big names, and maybe even even have. I mean, I think hopefully Agarwal is kind of that steadying influence for them, but. Maybe they didn't, you know. I guess they had Kane last year, but mm. and and I think a lot of the stuff that you hear about Kane was that he, you know, he was a very important part of that culture and that franchise. And I guess they're hoping that Brian Cargill and some of these other guys, even Aidan Markram, who's taken a bit more of a leadership role now, 
can be for them. But yeah, I, I think there's some serious talent in the squad, and you know, you guys talked about Mark Wood letting loose. Umran Malik could could do the absolute. Oh, same. I love this bowling lineup. It's, oh, there's, it's there's some really fa- fun there's some fantastic there's some fantastic talent in this bowling lineup. Sundar Malik, Adil Rashid if he plays, Bubi Kumar and Tina Tharajan. That's a really really quality bowling lineup. Can give you different looks. Can give you different matchups. You throw Phillips in there. There's lots to love about their bowling. I just have question marks about where all their runs are going to come from on a consistent basis. If Harry Brook is not scoring runs on a consistent basis, is Aidan Markram uh, a match-winning batter? I think that still remains to be seen. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I just don't know whether, they, whether they're going to get 180 out of that batting lineup on a consistent basis. They're going to get lots out of Harry Brook. I think I'm going to get lots out of Harry Brook. I think I'll get lots out of Glenn Phillips as well. Well, I yeah. hope that he plays, though, because if they have to play Klaassen as a keeper and you've got Markram and Brook and Rashid, then that's then that's that's four. So I don't know how they I don't know how they get Glenn Phillips into the side on a consistent basis unless you leave out Adil Rashid and you bring in another um, another Indian bowler. Which yeah, you could do. Yeah. Kartik Tiagi, Samad, there's some options there. Yeah. Anything else on the Sunrisers? Same a rendition of the song again? No, no we'll, we'll nobody needs to hear that, but you can go. It, the song is available in other places, and I do recommend you listen to it. <laughs> so, so, guys, let's wrap up the podcast with predictions. So, uh, any hot takes as well, appreciated here. But um, we're going to go in alphabetical order again, so we'll go Baldy, Binksy, Hippy, Raj in terms of order. So, I'll, I'm just getting. Well done. Um, Baldy can get his. Uh, that quickly. Yeah, yeah I've, 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 order. Pra- I've practiced it whilst did you, you? Re- whilst you did the song. Yeah, yeah. clever. Um, so if we can go for our bracket for the playoffs, so four teams of the playoffs, and our, and our winner, and then any yeah any any hot takes. Also, yeah, just if you want to throw in your purple and orange hat winner, I don't know which way around they are. So run, run score, and wicket taker. Oh, I haven't prepped for that. Yeah, I haven't prepped for that. Uh, that'll be that'll be a hot take because I have no idea who's playing or <laughs> who's injured or not. You made so, that quite clear. Yeah, so Johnny Bairstow, uh best batter, and uh, <laughs> Joshua Bumrah, best bowler. <laughs> Heard here first uh, for IPL 2025. <laughs> okay, Gujarat and the Royals. I've got locks to, to play in the playoffs. Uh, Royal Challengers, Bangalore, and I think the Mumbai Indians have a good year this year. I can't remember if it's the auspicious year or not, but let's just say it is, and they, they're the only one, and the other one in the top four. Cool. All right, I've got um, Mumbai Indians, RCB, KKR. Oh wow, and the Royals, the Rajasthan Royals, um, and my winner. Which dick are you? In? <laughs> my and my winner is the Rajasthan Royals. I think you'll remember that I I got a three out of four last year in terms of the playoffs. I'm pretty I've, sure. I've got the back and listen to that. Go back and listen to that episode. And I've got um, Harry Brook leading run scorer. Oh wow! And I've got Trent Bolt leading wicket taker. Okay. The I, when we come to you, Raj, um, uh, in terms of your predictions. I, I guarantee we're not going to hear Mumbai Indians in your top four because mm-hmm. you slated them when, when we were talking about them. That's correct. I think it's very interesting that we've had two Mumbai Indians. Well, Baldy's made his uh, predictions when he knew the number team. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Baldy's got, got Steve Waugh in there. <laughs> I, I, when, I, I, when I was doing mine, I there were three absolute locks that I put down, and that was Rajasthan, Sunrisers, and Gujarat. When I, I mean, we talked about Rajasthan and... Sunrises. Sunrises. I think the sunrises are so Look. stacked. I, I, they give me the same feeling when, I think we were all right really last year about Rajasthan, and I feel like the exact same. I feel the exact same way about sunrises. Oh, that's they're brain. they're very long in the odds. I think they're you know one ten to one. Ten to one. Like yeah. That. I've already. Don't worry. I've already invested. <laughs> I, I, they give me a, a great feeling. I just named all of those players. They've got balance. You know balance. Well, throughout the lineup, yeah, I, I think they're going to be big. I was that fourth side. I did find very hard. All those other sides, I thought there's there's you know there's weaknesses everywhere in all of them, and I actually went with Mumbai again because I just think that batting lineup has so much to prove. The batting lineup, you know, all of those guys. Just this is if it could go horribly wrong, and I I could see them either making the playoffs or finishing last again. Mm-hmm. That's basically the only two outcomes I see for Mumbai. Gosh, Raj, yeah, I, I'm looking at the, the rankings I put down, and I I must have been um, a bit busy during the day because I got Rajasthan down at eight, um, so then that's clearly wrong. So I think that Rajasthan actually win the thing. Mm. I think that Rajasthan's yep. at the top for me. Yeah, um, I agree. I've got Gujarat and uh, RCB uh, in 
two and three. Yep. I, I really think that the top sort of three or four are a lot better than the, the rest, and then probably eight, nine, ten is uh, I would agree. Yeah. Is, is, is probably a, a long way away then. So we've got Rajasthan, Gujarat, RCB, and I've got Delhi Caps in four. Yep, I, like uh, that. I do think that KKR are a very good value bet considering what the uh, bookies have on them. But uh, yeah, so I've got I've got those four as my bracket. So we've all got Ad- Ad- we've all Rajasthan got, and Gujarat. We've, I've not got Gujarat. No. Okay. Yeah. We've got Rajasthan. We've all got we've all got Rajasthan. We've got two Mumbai Indians. We've got a bit of a double up on. Has anyone not got the challenges? I got the challenges. I got the challenges. You got the challenges. No, no challenges. You got no challenges. So yeah, there's a bit no of like, Raj- Raj- Rajasthan's the only unanimous. I like it. Oh, okay, yeah. I like it. Sure. Very good. You might be done. Well, there you go. An hour and twenty in. What a value for money podcast like uh, this has been. And. <laughs> um, Please do drop into the comments, uh, like and subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel. It was great to get uh, a number of viewers of our uh, first integrated episode last week. So if you are enjoying that as a way to find and listen or watch the podcast, please let us know in the comments or on our socials, the top order podcast at gmail.com or visit the website www.thetoporderpodcast.com to find out where you can listen and find us. But for now, it is good night and good bless from us all here in Auckland. We'll be with you throughout the tournament and, of course, throughout this New Zealand winter. And to keep an eye on all of our franchise players. But for now, good night. God bless from us all here in Auckland. See you soon.